The only thing that leads to success is hard work and a, and a clean and sober mind. Nothing else. And a little luck thrown in. But the main thing is hard work, never stopping, and a clean and sober mind. Otherwise, you're going to get nowhere in life. Nowhere. Unless you were born on Pacific Heights, you'll become a, a heroin addict from the inheritance. Because it, dis, it, it disenfranchises you from working. All you do is walk around all day long stoned and think that you're, that you're a, a, a god because your mother gave you the money. And you sneer at everybody as you walk down, down the hill from Pacific Heights. As you walk down from Broadway and you go down to the Union Street at 11 in the morning for breakfast with, with three girls. You think you're on top of the world. The next thing you know, you're throwing up and you're dying in your own vomit. That, that's, that, that's what goes I'm telling you, it's horrible. You look at the, the so-called unbelievable society of San Francisco, how degenerate and corrupt it is. You see the problem with America itself. They don't, they don't have children. They don't get married and have children. None of them. Well, a few here and there. They accidentally breed. 855-407-282. Phone number. Savage Nation. Do you want me to go on this direction or the light direction? Raise your hands. I go back to the easy. Easy talk. I can go to the, the buffet aboard the USS Somerset a little bit more. Yes, buffet? Robert says buffet. How many of you want me to go heavy into the actual problems of America? Who's doing it to us? And will we actually survive? I think I can't do that right now. But... For those of you who are bent in the direction of the problems in America, who's doing it to us, I invite you to look at the table of contents of Government Zero, which is now on michaelsavage.com. And if you tell me you can resist reading this book, then I'll tell you that all you deserve hearing is, is about the buffet. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're talking about everything under the sun, and one of the topics is the issue of saturated fats and cholesterol which is an, it's a very important topic because now ignoramuses in the media are saying it doesn't matter, eat what you want. I've heard this garbage for 40 years. Science tells you the opposite. Not the government, but actual studies, which you don't read when you're a, a sportscaster on radio. You know, you want to smoke cigars and say it has no effect on your health. Good luck to you, but everyone knows it's absolutely related to cancer. You want to think you're going to be the one in 10 million that isn't affected? Keep smoking a cigar. You know... You want to load your body up with garbage food and think it has no effect on your health? Keep eating the garbage food. But that's not science. It's not medicine. Lenny on WMAL, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Uh, Dr. Savage, uh, you blend the uh, politics with the uh, science very nicely. Uh, just wanted to talk touch base with you. Yeah, I concur with you on the uh, absorption of the uh, of fat in the cardiovascular disease, which I've been involved with and practicing for 30 years. The key thing is the cholesterol, and you can't separate it out. You do not absorb cholesterol, as you know, from digestion. It has to be broken down into micromolecules. So, no, hold, hold on. Let's pause for the average listener. You and I know what you're saying. You know better than I do that, that some, some cholesterol is absorbed into the body. In addition to the body making its own cholesterol, some of the cholesterol in food is absorbed through the jejunum, or jejunum, however you want to say it, that part of the small intestine, and this was after many years of study, the, uh, the protein named, named NPC1L1, if I remember, is a protein that allows cholesterol to be, let's say, captured and sucked up through the intestine and carried to the liver and bloodstream. So that, that tends to make your argument a little uh, less strong. Well, but that's only a certain situation. It's generally within a diseased gut. So what, what you have to be concerned with is that in fact, those well, well, I, I don't agree with you. I'm sorry, doctor. I don't agree with you. I believe that all people have this protein name, named NPC1L1. It was only discovered recently. You know that. Yeah, but bottom line is is that for the most part, high cholesterol is generated by within the liver. And you, yes. Yeah, well, here's the here's the deal. It's, well, well, let's take it one statement at a time. Yes, cholesterol is manufactured by the liver. But consuming high cholesterol foods also impacts 
the uh, uh, the amount of cholesterol in the body itself. Now, having said that, I come from a different school of thought altogether. Going back to the early days of vitamin therapy with Linus Pauling, who argued that the amount of cholesterol in your blood doesn't matter at all if you're taking a sufficient amount of antioxidants such as vitamin E and vitamin C, which prevent the cholesterol from and the saturated fats from oxidizing and and in, in essence altering the uh, the the intima of the of the of the of the blood cells. So it's not the cholesterol or fat per se. It's whether or not you are preventing that from hardening inside the arteries, to make it simple. Would you agree or disagree with that? Oh, oh bingo, and I agree with you, and I've read your book, so I, I love Linus Pauling, and you are exactly correct. It is, it is the oxidation within the bloodstream, not necessarily the, the count of cholesterol. And also the so look, you're, you're a cardiologist. You're a cardiologist. You're like an Einstein compared to me when it comes to this stuff. But when it comes to blood chemistry and nutrition, I know a fair amount. But having said that, doctor, here's the thing. If you start telling the average listener out there that the amount of cholesterol in your food doesn't matter because your body makes it itself, and then they start loading their body up with all the foods that they've eliminated, and at the same time, they're also told, oh, don't take vitamins. They have no effect whatsoever. Then we're back to the stupidity of the 1940s. And all of the knowledge over the last half century goes out the window because of sportscasters and radio who are now experts on nutrition. Exactly right. And that's the whole thing. They paint this with a broad brush. And you can't separate out high-fat foods and high cholesterol. They're usually lumped together. So... You're consuming bad food. That's the problem. You know, if you yeah, exa have exactly. That's interesting. That's 100% right. In other words, deep fried foods have a secondary set of problems associated with them uh, that have nothing to do with fat. It's about the trans fats. Again, you can say that has no, no effect. That's nonsense. We all know trans fats are da damaging to the arteries. You are great. I'm glad that you're a cardiologist who listens to the show and agrees with some of the things I say. I'm sending you a free copy of Nothing to Do with the Heart. It's called Government Zero. It has everything to do with the heart of America. It's the Savage Nation. Be here. Be nowhere. I'll be right back. More when I return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. So uh, I'm one of these guys who does a lot, gets a lot of blood testing done. Like once a year. That's not a lot. That's not paranoia. Paranoia would be once a month or once a week. That's, that would be nuts. Because my son said to me, stop with the blood tests already. You're like, you get too many. I don't got once a year. So because he said, don't get it, I went and had it done again. I'd forgotten that I wasn't doing it. So I just got this back. Can I share it with you on the air? I got it from my cardiologist. Dear Mike, just a preliminary note as the advanced lipid testing is not available. Slight elevation in glucose and HB1A1C at 5.9 suggests some excess carbohydrate, but not... Diagnostic of diabetes at this level, kidney, liver, thyroid, prostate, antigen, and CEA levels are normal. That's good. My, prostate, my, my PSA is 2.2, which is a big deal for men over a certain age. CRP level elevated at 5.2, consistent with increased inflammatory vascular risk. That's been going on for years. I'm always running an inflammation in my body constantly because I run hot. I'm on the radio. That's how hot I am. What do you think? The, I don't pay for it internally. I do. The, the guts are rot, rotting out. It's like a race car. But the thing is, I'm going to a race car and sit in a showroom. I'm a race car, and I run it on the track three hours a day. And if it burns out on the nitrous oxide fuel, what can I do? I think they burn NO2 in those. I don't even know what they put into them. So PSA, prostate, I'm always worried about that. It's the one thing I worry about. Because, whoa, that's bad. When the PSA starts going up, you know, they're going to cut this thing off. I don't want that. Well, although they're doing it today in a different way, they target, they don't take out the whole schmageggle. Years ago, if a guy had that, it was a death sentence to his masculinity. They uh, they cut the cords and you were finished. The next thing you knew, you were like a, a Democrat voting for uh, for Debbie Wasserman carrying a pocketbook. They cut the cords and the only thing you'd be good for would be war marrying a woman like Debbie Wasserman woman Schultz and carrying her handbag around. But no, no, today you can live with a high uh, a prostate cancer. They they target it. <laughs> so I says, mine was, I thought it went up. He said, 2-2. Two, two. He said, no, no, it's not up at all. PSA 2-2 is pretty good. He said, no, no, no. May of 2013, it was 2-2. December 14, it was 2-4. Current 2-2. Back in 07 to 11, your range was 1.25 to 1.9. Then, then radio took over. My PSA has gone up since I was banned in Britain. And I've been fighting ever since with legal suits. Like, it affects you. Don't kid yourself. Lawsuits will drive you to a cancer ward faster than anything. So I doctors, excuse me, that's why lawyers hate their lives. They pay for it inside. The one thing you should know, though, if you're into this whole field, 
is the LPA. I never understood why I'm still living. It's true I, I'm saturated in antioxidants and have been, I would say what, when did I really start doing the vitamin stuff? Third, 40 years ago? I was into it 40 years ago. I started taking mega doses of vitamin C and E and all of that. I was reading literature and practicing what I preached. And it's helped. I know that. It hasn't hurt. Dad died 57. Grandpa, 47. I remember I used to hang on and say, oh, well, that's terrible. They died young, but... I was like always running, terrified, you know, the heart attack for your cardio neurosis. And I always like hang on every word. I said, like an aunt who knew the old country, I say, yeah, but in the old country before they came here and they were stressed out, they must have lived real long in that old country. No, your great grandfather died at 43. Okay, that's good to know. So, you know, it's like, where do you go? <laughs> where do you go from there when you know you're, you know, genetically, you got a time bomb facing your head. So, you, yeah, I started studying it. I, I got to tell you, the food and the vitamins and all the other stuff has something to do with it. But here's the big but. It was only two, three years ago that I found out that my LPA, which is not controllable by anything, it's a certain fraction of the lipoproteins. You know how you all look at HDL and LDL? We all know that. And then, uh, then the VLDL and all of that. You look at the small fractions. There's another fraction of your lipids that you should look at called LPA, which cannot be altered. Drugs can't change it. Vitamins don't change it. It's either you have it genetically or you don't. It turns out I have an extremely low LPA. And it probably explains why I'm still living. Now, I must have gotten it from my mother. She lived to 88. Of course, she died of bowel cancer, God rest her soul. But that's the next set of problems. I'm not going for the, the kielbasa again, I'll tell you that. No more kielbasa in me. I'm sorry. That once was enough. I'm waiting for them to perfect the uh, virtual colonoscopy. Where you swallow a, a marker, you know? That's what I, I, I don't want no more kielbasa on a screen, sorry. I didn't enjoy the experience. I know I live in San Francisco, but it was not that enjoyable, to be honest with you. It was fri horrible, the, the, drinking that garbage for two days and purging your gut and then the, the, the gown and other people in gowns like an award. It's like a bad thing. Lift the, ugh, I don't want to go into it. I'm not into colonoscopy. Some people may like it. I don't know. Maybe they do it regularly. And it wasn't so bad. Can I do it again, Doc? No, sorry. You only get to do that once every five years. Can I not do it again? In a month? No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, but I don't enjoy procedures. But that's the one thing is this uh, uh, PSA, very concerned. Don't want to see it rise. Because I say the next thing you know, you're a pocketbook carrier for the women of the world like a Debbie Vassimo and Show. <laughs> do you mind that I'm just having fun? Does anyone mind that I'm just veering away, veering away from the insanity of the day? That's why we're playing 40s music, because I went on the ship, and they had a 40s uh, group of girls dancing there and singing, and they were doing 40s songs. And it was fun. It was really fun, the USS Somerset. I don't know. I think they have too much. They, they expose too much of our military to, like, foreigners. I saw Chinese aboard making believe that they were just, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh can I go in there? No, no, sorry. That's close to the public. Oh, no. Oh. Camera, click, 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 click. Everywhere you go, click, click. Suddenly they closed off the war room, finally, after many years of the... I used to go on these ships. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'll never forget, as long as I live, as on one of these five years ago, there was a Chinese woman from China, a journalist. Real cute. If she wasn't a spy, my dog isn't a poodle. She was running around clicking every companion way on that ship. Click, click. Oh, what's in there? Uh -huh, click, click. Everywhere you turn, she was there. And the moron, the Navy, the Navy morons were, were everything they exposed to her. This was under Bush, the genius. So don't assume it just happened under Obama, the denigration of our military. Oh, this started a long time ago. The open, open to everybody. Everybody open. Open. Go to China and see what they'll let you see. Now it even gets better. You want to hear another news story? This morning I read that the moron who Obama pointed up to head up NASA, who I think said Muslims created space uh, exploration. I swear, I think it's the same jer jerk. The guy looks like Jeremiah Wright, an idiot. He says that we should cooperate with China and share all of our rocket secrets uh, and make sure we do space exploration with China. This is the next thing. I, he, he gave up everything on the earth, now give up space advancements that we have. Wow. Where does it end with these people? Could Donald Trump even purge? these people from government it's going to take an awful lot to clean up this mess i don't know whatever that's that's true well now it's time for a little more sound 
from the actual America out there, not in your own head. And that would be, again, going to, I think, Jeremiah Wright, who is Obama's pastor. If you think that he's toned down his rhetoric, if you think that although he's a multimillionaire who lives in a mansion in Chicago surrounded by bodyguards, that's 